Well, Desmond Ritter seems to be flying up the draft boards. Plenty of teams last second, including the Indianapolis Colts this week, having a last second workout in Cincinnati. Uh, the draft begins on April 28th. You think he creeps into the first round? I do. Um, he just it feels like a lot of teams have the interest in him. I, I think at the very worst, he's a really good backup quarterback. And, and he may not be the, the top-end talent, but I think he's the kind of guy that even if he doesn't become a star, you see him in this league for seven or eight years, you go, oh, that's Blaine, that's Blaine Gabbert-like. I just think he's that kind of guy with more upside. I don't mean that in a bad, bad way. I'm just saying in a worst-case scenario. I, I know for a lot of people the big fear is that he becomes a Pittsburgh Steeler. <laughs> that would be really tough. You <laughs> say Blaine Gabbert not in a bad way, uh, last I checked. Oh, no, Blaine, Blaine Gabbert. Gabbert. No, uh, that's exactly right. Chase Daniel. Yeah, some of those guys are great. They got some fat bank Colt accounts. Colt McCoy. And not the wear and tear. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's no the question. best job in football. No question. Uh, let's talk the Bengals because the Bengals have plenty of draft picks as we take a look at with the picks that they hold in this next NFL draft on the 28th. The 31st in the first round, the 63rd in the second, 95th in the third. They have one pick in each of the six rounds, and then the seventh round, they have two picks. Uh, there's plenty of ways that the Bengals could go with this draft. They're pretty set in a lot of positions. You have them needing defensive backs, maybe. Yeah, I, I, here's the thing, I, and I, I think you just said that well. There's so many ways they can go because when you look, they, they literally have all 11 starters who started in the Super Bowl back. You have, with the additions of the three offensive linemen, you've got now technically your offensive group set as starters and getting Hayden Hurst the tight end. So it's not like you're drafting going, boy, we really have to plug a guy in. I mean, like Jackson Carmel was taken last year with the belief or hope that, hey, he's going to plug in and play guard. He didn't do that, obviously. You know, he, he, he didn't win the job, but that was kind of the hope there. And, and so this year, it literally is kind of with an eye towards the future. Um, to me... I do think they're going to at least get one cornerback, if not two, inside the first two days, either Thursday and or Friday, which is a first-round guy, third-round guy. And while I'm going to say safety, people are going to go, wait a minute, you got Jesse Bates and Von Bell. Yeah, you do. For now. But I don't know if you got Jesse Bates after this year at the, at the amount of money. I mean, let's not forget, you can't sign all these guys. I know in a perfect world you'd love to. So to me, I mean, in a perfect world, it would be a corner, a safety, and an offensive lineman um, preferably a tackle just because you're you know you're three deep there with Isaiah Prince at the moment you could kick a Denigy out if you had to I mean we still don't know if Jackson Carmen could play there I mean that that, that there's my group in, in that order um and to me I, I you know I throw cornerback up there at one that cornerback would almost be three too I wouldn't mind corner say you came out corner safety corner out of the first out of the first two days of the draft I go yes sir that, that's pretty doggone good the other position to look out for and I don't have it on the list because it's not on my wish list but I can see it happening and maybe as early as the first round is wide receiver and you go That's hang on a second guy wait a minute they got three great wide receivers you're right they do but Tyler Boyd's contracts up after after it you're, you're getting T Higgins towards the end of his rookie contract that stuff happens quickly uh, and and so this is kind of that year where I think you said it like I said perfectly early is you've got a chance to kind of draft for future potential openings with those guys being depth pieces for this year I think the cornerback whoever that might be if it's a first round corner comes in and competes with Eli Apple. If Eli Apple beats him out, okay, that's fine. It's not a perfect role. I like the guy, the first round guy to maybe beat Eli Apple out. I think that's what they would prefer. <laughs> but I think that's what this draft is about, is kind of drafting for some future opportunities in depth. And boy, that's a really good place to be. You, it's interesting you mentioned the wide receivers, because that was going to be my, my next question, which the idea of you can't pay everybody. Right. Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow are going to be big, big time, money. big time yep. bank breakers. Yep. Do you think they draft, I'll just throw it out there, Tyler Boyd's replacement? I do. Um, and that, that's a perfectly said. Uh, uh, Sky Moore from, from uh, Western Michigan. Uh, I almost pulled the trigger in a mock draft in the first round. I got lucky in another one and got him in the second round. I'm going to do another mock at the end of next week before the draft. Um, yeah, I think that's the perfect guy. If not, um, you know, an outside receiver for depth. But, you know, right now you've got – Special teams pieces behind the big three. Don't forget, the big three last year missed only two games, and I don't count the Cleveland game because that doesn't count for anybody's sake. And that was T. Higgins missing two games. Jamar Chase played every other game. Tyler Boyd played every other game, other again than the, the Cleveland game. Chase played a little bit of that one to get his, his, his record. So you also need a little bit of depth there too. So I think that's – yeah, don't be shocked, and, and don't, don't roll your eyes if it's a first-round wide receiver or a second-round wide receiver either.